Today I'm taking a look at the weapon systems for the KA-50, starting with a 30mm cannon. The first step is to enable your master arm switch, as well as your laser designator. Next, uncage the Schwal camera using the O key on your keyboard, and slew it onto your target. With the minus and equals keys on your keyboard, you're able to change the FOV of the camera, and using the bracket keys, you're able to affect the size of the target frame. The enter key locks the target, and TA will appear, indicating that it's tracking. Taking a look at the weapons panel, we're able to see that we can change the rate of fire of the cannon, the ammo type used, as well as burst settings, and it also displays how many rounds we have. The cannon has an effective range of 2 kilometers, though with a high attack angle, you're able to reach that out to about 3. Pressing the C key on your keyboard will select the gun, and here we can see how the HUD changes. The rectangle that appears on the HUD is the traverse limits for the cannon. The C icon that appears on the HUD, as well as the Schwal display, indicates that it's clear to fire. The space key on the keyboard is used to fire the gun. Holding the trigger will fire a burst that corresponds with the settings in the weapons control panel. Lower attack angles are good for strafing multiple targets, whereas higher attack angles are good for concentrating fire into a smaller area. Taking a look at our ammunition stores indicator, we're able to see the number 16. This is times 10, so we have 160 rounds remaining. Here you can see switching to armor piercing ammo, we have 220 rounds remaining. Destroying armored targets using the 30mm cannon takes considerably more ammunition, as you'll see when we hit this LAV-25. Armor-piercing ammunition isn't as devastating as high-explosive ammunition, though it will punch through an armor target, whereas high-explosive will not. Now we'll take a look at the Vicar laser guided missile. Again, the first step is to enable master arm and the laser designator. Next, we'll uncage the Schwal camera, slew it onto our target, and lock it up. The procedure is the same as when we use the 30mm cannon.
select the hard point you have the missile stored on by pressing the I or Y key on your keyboard. Here you're able to see how the HUD has changed again. The reticle that appeared is the Vickers aiming reticle. If we slew it over our target, C will appear, indicating that we are clear to fire. Here you can see it's important to keep the reticle centered over your target. Release the missile by holding weapons release. On the left you can see a countdown. It indicates time to impact plus 6 seconds. You can also fire the missiles in pairs by changing your burst settings on your weapons control panel. Now we'll take a look at the use of unguided rockets. Again, enable your master arm and your laser designator. Uncage the Schwal camera and lock up your target. By changing the burst settings in the weapons control panel, you're able to change between firing pairs or salvos. Since we're using S-13 rockets, we'll be firing them in pairs, since a salvo will unload both pods. If you're carrying more than one type of rockets, you're going to have to manually change the ballistic settings depending on the type of rocket. S-13s use a setting of two. Located at the lower section of the HUD, you're able to see the reticle for the rockets. The goal here is to place that reticle on top of our target lock. Once we're within range and the C icon has appeared on our HUD and our display indicating that we're clear to fire, we can hold the weapons release to fire the rockets. In this case, I'm trying to go for a higher attack angle so I can get more rounds on target. <laughs> 